two men. Two philosophies. Two choices. One decision. You decide. Hello, my name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now since 1989 I've been an evangelist doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. What you're about to watch is a debate that we taped many years ago. Uh, sorry about the poor quality in some areas, but I think the in message is very fascinating. I do many debates at universities. I'm very willing to do more. We just recently began posting a list on our website of professors who have refused to debate me. I've had 60-some debates. If you talk to a professor who believes in evolution, Try to ask them if they'd be willing to debate against a creationist. I'd be honored to do that. I'll be very nice to them, but I'll show them they're wrong and God's word is right. Um, and we, if they refuse, then please send me their name and what they teach, and we'll put them on our list on our website, drdino.com, uh, under the section of those who have refused to debate me. This will be a long debate with me talking to an anthropology class at the University of West Florida. One of the professors from the class used to ask me to come teach his class every year for one hour, or for one class period. He then moved on, and I haven't been back to that class for a while, but I'd be glad to come speak to any class, university, uh, college, uh, Christian or non-Christian, and field questions from the audience. We can talk about the subject of creation evolution. Hope you enjoy this uh, uh, debate. We have quite a few more. If this is the only one you've seen, we suggest you get our catalog. You can call the office or write or uh, get on our website, and that information will come up on screen, and you can uh, get information about how to get more debates or our other series of tapes. We have a lot of information designed to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. We encourage people to believe the Bible and do what it says and accept Christ as their Savior uh, so they don't die and go to hell. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Thank you for coming for the second years in a row. And thank you, Dr. Lee, for having me. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Good job. All right. It's good to be here. My name is Kent Hovind. I live here in Pensacola. I uh, moved here five years ago to put my wife through school at Pensacola Christian College. I have three teenagers. They go to Pensacola Christian High School. Um, I was a science teacher 15 years, and now travel around and speak full-time on this subject, creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. That's my full-time ministry. I speak over 700 times a year. I'm an old-fashioned Bible-believing Christian. I believe the Bible is literally true from cover to cover. And with my science background, it puts a little different slant on things. And so what we're going to share with you today, of course, is the creationist view of how the world got here and some of the things that you've been taught in anthropology class, I would say, of course, are very, very wrong. But it's good to have scientific discussions like this. That's the purpose of an education. See, if you're only shown one side of an issue, you're not being educated, you're being indoctrinated. So an education shows people all the various sides and lets them use their own intellect and decide which one is the most reasonable. I hold, without apology, to the creationist worldview that this world is too complex. It had to be created by an all-wise, all-powerful creator who is outside of and beyond and above and not affected by his creation. There are really only two opposing worldviews. There is the worldview of evolution. I'm going to draw it like so, and I'm going to make three columns to, uh, for this discussion here. We'll take questions all along the way. You can stop me at any time and say, no, wait, I disagree with that, and we'll discuss it. And Dr. Lee introduced me as the leading expert. I don't know about that. I was just a high school science teacher. But uh, I do have uh, plenty of opportunities to speak on this. I do numerous debates uh, at universities. I've had three here so far at University of West Florida. And I appreciate the academic uh, atmosphere where they allow me to come in. Uh, I speak many times in public schools. I was in six this week already. I speak very frequently in public schools. And I think students need to see all sides of this issue. What we've had for the last 30 years, particularly though, is the creationist worldview has been totally censored out of our textbooks. I collect the public school textbooks. I have just nearly all of them from science textbooks from all the major publishers for many years. And the evolutionist frame of mind or worldview is the only one that is promoted in the textbooks. Now, of course, we have many teachers who treat the subject very fairly, but the textbooks have become increasingly one-sided. We're going to make three columns. There are some facts. And then there are different ways to interpret the fact. Sometimes two people can look at the very same thing and come to opposite conclusions of what they're seeing. The story is told about the uh, farmer 
I was out pulling a calf one time. Anybody raised on a farm here? Any farm kids? A calf puller is a long pole with a block and tackle on it or a come along on it. And in case the cow has a hard time having a calf, you hook a rope around the calf's leg and you <coughs> winch it out of the cow. Help the cow out a little bit. Well, this farmer was out there pulling a calf and this city fella stopped to, to stop his car to see what's going on. He'd never seen anything like this before in his life. And the farmer said, come here, man, give me some help, would you? And the city fella said, me? He said, yeah, come here. He said, I don't know nothing about this. He said, come on, I need some help now. So the city fella hopped out of his car, jumped the fence, ran over there and helped the farmer pull the calf. Never said a word. Just did what the farmer told him. You know, hold this, pull this. About 10 minutes later, they're walking up to the barn to get washed up. And the uh, city fella said, uh, or the far farmer said, man, you've been awful quiet. Are you okay? He said, oh yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. The farmer said, uh, have you ever seen anything like this before? The city fella said, no, sir, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And the farmer said, well, you got any questions? He said, oh, yes, I do. I have one question been bugging me the whole time we're out there. The farmer said, uh, let's hear it. The city fella said, uh, how fast do you think that calf was going when it ran into that cow? <laughs> no, no, you're looking at it all wrong. We are not separating the collision here. Uh, see, two people can look at the same thing and come to very opposite conclusions. I'll give you an example. It's a fact. Grand Canyon exists. I don't think you'd find too many folks that would disagree with that. Of course, there's always a few on the lunatic fringe who would say, no, we're not really here. We just think we're here. There is no such thing as reality, okay? We're going to discount those folks for today's discussion. There are really only two options, okay, to a lot of these questions we're going to raise today. Grand Canyon is there. It's a big crack in the ground. I have seen it from numerous angles. There is no question it's there. Now, there are several ways to interpret how it got there. The evolutionist interpretation The evolutionist interpretation says it took a little bit of water millions of years. That's called uniformitarian geology. How many are familiar with that word, uniformitarian? The way it's happening today is the way it has always happened. Charles Lyell was the champion of uniformitarianism back in his book, 1831, Principles of Geology, Volume 1. Charles Lyell really taught and introduced into the public arena the idea of uniformitarianism. There is another worldview which is the creationist worldview. The creationist worldview says it took a lot of water a little bit of time. <coughs> Lots of water a short time. You see, while the mud was soft, and Grand Canyon is obviously all composed of sedimentary rock, so it was all sedimentary rock mud at one time before it turned to rock, there's nobody would argue that question. That's how sedimentary rock is formed. The creationist would say a lot of water formed Grand Canyon in just a matter of a few hours or a few days, not millions of years. The fact is the canyon is there. Now, how are you going to interpret that fact? Some people tend to confuse the interpretation with the fact, and that's where you have to really watch that you don't get caught in that trap. What we're going to share now is just the creationist worldview opinion of how it may have happened. None of us were there. That's obvious. So we have to then go on the facts that we can find and try to interpret, make up a model that'll work.